In the book, King, Warrior, Magician, and Lover, Robert Moore and Douglas Gillette stated that the warrior should not be identified with human rage in any simple way. They also believe that this primarily masculine energy form persists because the warrior is a basic building block of masculine psychology, almost certainly rooted in our genes. We see the great warrior tradition in nearly every civilization. The reason for this is that the warrior energy is universal. More and Gillette say, it is a vital ingredient in our world building and plays an important role in extending the benefits of the highest human virtues and cultural achievements to all of humanity. The warrior archetype relates to a total way of life, what the samurai called a do. These characteristics constitute the warrior's dharma, maat or tao, a spiritual or psychological path through life. A warrior is aggressive, for it is an aggressive approach towards life that needs to be adopted in order to access the warrior energy. A passive living will not do, but rather, one must take the offense, face life frontly, and pursue the things you want in life instead of waiting around for them to come to you. In this manner, a warrior does not sleep through life. Rather, he is someone who is aware and focused. This is aided by a sense of clarity. He is clear in his desires and wants, and hence, knows how to act in order to get them. As a function of his clarity of mind, he is a strategist and a tactician, according to Moore and Gillette. Clarity is also helped by the fact that life is short. The warrior understands how fragile life can be and how quickly it can end. And so, he's clear in his thoughts and actions as he attempts to decisively achieve his aims. Moore and Gillette say, A man accessing the warrior archetype has a positive mental attitude, as they say in sales training. This means that he is an unconquerable spirit, that he has great courage, that he is fearless, that he takes responsibility for his actions, and that he has self-discipline. The warrior is trained, he is disciplined, and he's committed. With discipline, he comes to control his mind and also learns to suffer in the present in order to gain in the future. The commitment is to something greater than oneself, some ideal that allows detachment from the ego, and hence, avoiding the pettiness of everyday life. Such commitment can come in the form of religion, country, or an ideal like freedom. A warrior is also able to detach from his current emotions and feelings and look at what is happening with rational thought. More and Gillette say, Often in life, we need to step back, we say, from a situation in order to gain perspective so that we can act. The warrior needs room to swing his sword. He needs separation from his opponents in the outer world and from his own inner opponent in the form of negative emotions. However, the warrior, just like the king energy, also has a shadow form. The warrior's shadow is a sadist and a masochist. A sadist being someone who doesn't have his mind or feelings under control and uses physical violence and is unable to connect with others. The Malai Massacre is an example of this energy or someone who has a compulsive personality disorder. While the masochist is the passive role of the warrior, he is someone who is a pushover, has cowardly tendencies, has a tough time keeping others' opinion out of his thoughts, and easily gives up. Personally, the archetypes can be a tricky concept to accept. It is not clear if such things are real or not, or if they play a significant role in one's life. However, by adopting certain principles or actions that are associated with these archetypes, you can bring improvements in your life. The warrior archetype urges movement and decisive action, two things I know I need to get better at. Far too many times I have been passive and unengaging with life. The existence of such archetypes may be questionable. However, by organizing certain qualities and traits in a manner of archetypes, it can be easier to understand and apply them to everyday life. By actively thinking about the warrior archetype and wanting to adopt its mannerisms, you are constantly reminded to engage life and not to hesitate. The warrior seeks out his life and does not wait for it. So, when you reflect on your past and you notice all the times when you could have used the warrior energy but failed, you are reminded then of the necessity of this archetype and through it the necessity of action.